Hello, my name is Steve and welcome along to Thinking Martial Arts. This little idea I have here I call Pyramid of Skill Development. What made me come uh, to develop this was in many cases uh, frustration. Uh, we'll use this uh, in terms of uh, BJJ. Okay, so we can use it for lots of different martial arts styles and different concepts within martial arts, but we'll just say for easy understanding, we're saying BJJ, right? What was happening was, I was very sure I knew particular techniques. I knew them, I knew them, I had seen them many times and I knew them. And then when I tried to even present them or think about how to drill them with some training partners, I was thinking, does this hand go here? And where, does, where does my right leg go? Where does my left leg go? And then I would be shown it again, or I would go and check it out and see it somewhere, and I'd go, yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yes, I, I know now. And I came to understand, and I've seen this same thing happen with students of mine as well, and I could see the frustration that they were having with it. Not so much that they didn't know, because um, we all know we have to learn, but the frustration i seen come from the fact that they and I thought that I knew. And I came to think, well, what, what's going on here? Do I know this? And what I've uh, developed here, if you like, is a kind of way of following through on that and helping you to understand how to build a game plan, how to know what you know, and how not to get too stressed out about it. So really what happened is, not, I didn't really know them. I never really knew them. I only recognized them. So the first level in the pyramid is recognition. So somebody shows me a technique, my coach shows me a technique, maybe I've seen before, maybe I've even practiced it before in another seminar or on a training session sometime in the past, and I recognize it, but I don't know it. So what that basically presents to me is Clarification, if you like, because if I say to um, say to a student, okay, here's a series of arm bars, here's maybe ten arm bars, I show them, and the student goes, yeah, yeah, I've got that, I know it, that's fine, I've got it. And we do that a few times, and they're quite confident that they know it. And then a couple of months later, I say, could you show me that ten series of arm bars that I showed you? Now the chances are, now if they show them all, great, well done, but the chances are they'll show maybe four or five and then they'll start to go ah uh, um uh, <laughs> like like i did and like most people tend to do so what we're saying then is that they recognized the 10 when i showed them to them they'd seen them before and they kind of thought yeah i know that i know them but when we get to even recall them to utilize them in training drills you can't remember them all okay so maybe you can recall, like in this instance, five. Okay, so now we say, out of ten that you recognised, you're able to recall five that you can drill with. You know them enough to drill them, right? So then what happens? We say, well, okay, let's roll. So the student starts to roll, and of course you're trying to match people up, so they roll with um, similar people, or you're setting standards so that if they're rolling with more uh, talented or more experienced people, you're setting parameters down so everybody has some fun and uh, has a good experience. And then you talk to the student, you know, I don't know, either at the end of that night or two, three, four, five training sessions later, and you say, how are you going with those five arm bars that we talked about? How are you managing it? How many can you pull off? And the chances are they'll say, oh, well, I got um, one of them I managed to pull off three or four times, and uh, the other one I managed to pull off once, the other one I pulled off once, and the other two I didn't have a lot of skill with, a lot of success with. So what we're saying now is, okay, so we're moving it from recall to functional skill. So a skill that you can actually make work under, not crazy resistance, but a certain level of resistance in a live opponent. So look what's happening here. We go from 10 that we thought we knew to five that we could kind of recall for drilling purposes, to maybe one or two that we can have some functional skill success with. So out of that five, we've managed to pull 
maybe two or three of them off and one of them we pulled off three or four times more often than the others. So that takes us to the next thing here which is the high skill point. So what we're saying is for that individual whether it's me, you, anybody, they've now found out that out of that 10, they've got one, maybe two that are functional skill and one that they really can have some success with. So what's, what's the point of this? What's the idea? Well, the simple fact is when you're learning something, you, if you can understand what you're learning and why you're learning it and have a method of learning and um, a way of keeping yourself from becoming too frustrated with what's happening, you can clarify this for yourself and you go, well, that's okay, I didn't really know them anyway. I recognise them, that's okay, and I'll work towards recalling them. If they're important to you, now if you're a coach, then you have to be able to recall a lot of stuff because you have to teach it because as you're teaching these uh, techniques and these concepts and these transitions and so on and so forth in BJJ, you're going to have students who are going to find functional skill and eventually a high skill point with perhaps different techniques from you. So you need to have a good recall in the techniques, but from an instructor's perspective, if you and I'm talking about someone who, who's working, they have a family, they're teaching BJJ, I'm not talking about someone who's a professional instructor, the concept is different. Well, it's not really that different. It may, you may expand the high skill points, they may be able to deliver a lot more techniques at a high skill level and certainly from a functional skill perspective and a recall perspective they're going to expand that perspective there or that, that gap. But for the average person from an instructor's perspective you want to be able to recall uh, more, more techniques and an ability to present them to your students in a way that allows them to drill them and to practice them and then transfer them into functional skill initially and then go looking for the high skill point. When we talk about martial arts having um, being uh, a science and an art, this falls into that category because what we're saying is, here's a scientific way to deliver this technique or that technique. If you do this step and this step and this step and this step, you'll get this outcome. And then you'll get an individual who starts taking techniques and moving them to a high skill point which is particular to them. So that's what makes this really interesting. I like this idea. It helped me to uh, explain to people that when they were getting upset or disappointed or, you know, kind of uh, demotivated by the fact that they're going, I'll never learn this stuff. I, I thought I knew all that stuff and now I, I realise I don't know any of it and all that kind of thing. And keep in mind, this is your strength. There's a, there's a school of thought that says, uh, you know, maintain your strengths and build on your... Uh, build up your weaknesses but I'm not so sure about that because are you then going to just let your strengths simmer and fall away perhaps you should look at your scale your uh, strengths and look at a half a dozen different ways to get to that high skill point because now you've got something that you really can pull off I think top competitors are doing that I mean if you look at some of the top um, names in either in who um, are BDJ guys in MMA or are BG comps, they invariably have a speciality, and that's what we're talking about here. This idea of building to a point and developing a high skill point. But from an instructor's perspective, what I'm thinking here is, you know, if you're a coach and you're teaching people, this is a good little idea to explain to the student what the game's going to be about in the long run. You can use this as a guide and say, look, it's okay, you, you can't be expected to make all of this stuff into this compartment and certainly not all of this stuff into this compartment and you're probably not going to get all of this functional skill into this compartment either. So just relax, do your best, work away at this here and we'll move forward. So anyway, something for you to consider. I think again from a coach's perspective it's certainly something worth, um, worth keeping in mind because you can say to the student, don't worry you're not forgetting all these techniques. You never really knew them in the first place, you're just recognising them. But not to worry because we're going to put them from this section to this section. You'll be good, don't worry. And I think it puts people um, 
know, at the raise, it gives them a, a reason, you know, a way to think about it. And it causes them to think, oh, that's okay, I, I'm all right. And is this common? Does this happen to everybody? You can say, yeah, see, it's good. No problem. Let's go. <laughs> so, something for you to think about. Thinking martial arts. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much.